after knowing that that a PLL block actually maintains a relationship between the input and the output frequency and input at the output phase, what we would like to uh, learn is how can we implement this PLL block. First thing to start with is in a very simple manner. Okay? Let us not uh, complicate the implementation uh, to begin with, we will start with the very simple example. Okay. So, the thing which we are going to learn is a simple implementation of PLL block. Okay. So, we know that this PLL block is some shown here and I will just remove this. Okay. So, input and output are sinusoidal signals that is what we know. We need to somehow uh, find the phase error okay, between the input and output sinusoidal signals. So, let us look at it. V in is A in times sin of omega in t and V out is A out times sin of omega out t. If you recall here uh, the basic trigonometric identities right? and you would like to know that how can I subtract one argument of the sine wave from the other. Okay? You will find that uh, you need to multiply these two signals. Okay? So, earlier I took here a out sin of omega out t, you can take sin 1 cosine. Okay? If you take cosine, uh, you will find uh, uh, you may recall uh, your trigonometric identity in much faster. So, I will just use that. There is no problem in using sin in both the cases. So, when I multiply v in and v out, what do I get? A in times A out into sin of omega in t times cosine of omega out t and you remember that 2 sin a cos p can be written as sin of a plus p and plus sin of a minus p. So, this I am just multiplying and dividing by 2 and this I can write as a in A out by 2 into sin of omega in plus omega out times t plus sin of omega in minus omega out times t. Okay. So, the V in V out, if you multiply it, you get uh, this particular uh, these particular terms. Here you see there are two terms, one is omega in plus omega out and another is omega in minus omega out. Okay? So, so far we are, we are just able to do addition and subtraction in phase with phase variables. Okay? We have not done anything more than that. Now, I will just use this is in general what we have seen. If I say omega n is equal to omega here and omega out is equal to omega itself. If this is the case, we will take two cases. If this is the case omega n minus omega out, we will see v in into v out is nothing but a in a out by 2 times sin of 2 omega times t plus sin of 0. So, if the two frequencies are same, then you will see that there are two components at the output of this uh, multiplier or multiplication v in into v out and one is at 2 times the omega frequency and the other term is 
0 itself. Okay. So, this is what you have in case this is case 1. Okay. In case 2, if you have a frequency error between the input and the output signals omega let us say minus delta omega then v in cross v out as a in a out by 2 times sin of 2 omega minus delta omega times t plus sin of delta omega times t. This is interesting. If there is a frequency error between the input and the output signal and that frequency error is delta omega, then you get two components and one of these components is proportional to the frequency error. Okay. In another case, we do not have any frequency error, but we have phase error. What does that mean? It means that I have omega in t which is here integrated part plus let us say I have phi in of 0 and this is phi out of 0. To begin with there were the two sine waves you can think they are shifted by some phase. So, you have some phase offset here. In that case if I assume that omega in is equal to omega out is equal to omega, but phi in 0 minus phi out 0 these are just you can say is not is non 0 then you can say I have phi error of 0. In this particular case v in cross v out is equal to a in a out by 2 times sin of 2 omega t plus so you will have phi in 0 plus phi out of 0 okay, plus sin of phi error 0. Okay. So, you see three cases here the basic idea was to somehow operate on the argument of the sine waves because the actual signals which are present there are voltage waveforms. I had to operate only on the sine wave uh, on the phase part of the sine waves. So, we saw three cases when you have frequency error, when you do not have frequency error, when you have frequency error, when you do not have frequency error, but you have phase error. Okay. Then you have two components, one component which is sitting at uh, 2 omega and the other component which is phase error 0 which is actually a very uh, which is a uh, which does not vary with time. Okay. So, from here we can say that this kind of operation between the input and the output signal gives us voltage is a multiplication here. So, we are still getting uh, uh, voltage waveform here right. We get voltage which is proportional to the phase or frequency error. I am using the term proportional here because this is coming as sin of delta omega t or sin of phase error. It is not directly proportional to the uh, phase of frequency error, but it is proportional. This uh, proportionality is non-linear here because it is sign. So, I will just replace this P D block using a simple mixer which is shown by a cross sign here. I am feeding V in and getting V out, uh, feeding V in and V out. And the output of this mixer is our error voltage and if you have a mixer you multiply these two voltages in any circuit 
right? You will see that the output is also voltage. So, I get here as voltage only V error voltage, is not it? So, this V error voltage is proportional to the phase and frequency error. Now, let us uh, just try to uh, uh, take the simplest case which is case 3 and in case 3 I have V error as A in times A out by 2 sin of 2 omega t plus phi in 0 plus phi out of 0, these were the initial phase offsets in the signal plus sign of phase error 0. Okay. This is what we have. Here 0 refers to the time instant t equal to 0. Okay. So, now if that is the case where our error voltage has 2 terms 2 omega t and the phase error between the two output two signals right one is the input other is the output what the pll block will do if the frequency is same it will try to actually make the phase error zero okay so what we need to process in this particular pll block the so, we got at V error output, we got two components, one component at 2 omega frequency and the other component at DC. So, if I just look at the frequency spectrum of this V error signal, right, there are two components, one component at 2 omega, other component at DC and I need to operate on the phase error. If I need to operate on the phase error, that means I have somehow I have to reject this 2 omega component. Okay. So, if I have to reject the 2 omega component, the loop filter is going to help us do so. So, if the loop filter will help us in rejecting the 2 omega component, the bandwidth of the loop filter. What did we see earlier? That the loop filter is a block whose input is a voltage, output is a voltage. So, it is an easy one. So, loop filter is a block in general with transfer function something like this. Okay. This is your loop filter transfer function. It will have some bandwidth. Okay, omega minus <coughs> omega minus 3 dB, right? And this bandwidth is going to be smaller than the 2 omega component for sure. So, a simple uh, substitution for the loop filter is a simple RC filter here. Okay. So, this particular RC filter, as you see, it is going to filter the other component and it will give you uh, filter the 2 omega component and give you the control voltage. So, from this if I filter the 2 omega component my V c is going to be equal to A in A out by 2 times sin of phase error. Okay. Here I will write this phase error of 0. Okay. Now, this is our control voltage and this control voltage is going to change the frequency of the oscillator. Okay. For now, uh, we will not go into the block uh, what is there behind the oscillator. Uh, so, I will just draw one block which is commonly used as a voltage control oscillator using inverters. There is no need to uh, understand right now how it is operating. Okay. We will go in the detail of these blocks quite in quite some time. Okay. So, this is a block 
which has an output voltage V out and this V out is related to V control using the transfer function which using the frequency relationship which we talked earlier here. Okay. So, that is how you control it. So, then I will control this V out for the feedback I will connect it in this manner. Okay. So, what you see now is the following that my input is still the voltage and the output is a voltage, but I operate on the phase error between the input and the output signal and I give you error voltage like this and then you have the resistor R and C which constitute the loop filter and once you have the loop filter you get the you reject the other part the high frequency component from the loop filter and then you actually have a voltage control oscillator which converts this control voltage to output frequency and that frequency the phase and frequency relationship is there. So, you change the output phase. Okay. So, that is what we uh, see as a very simple implementation of our VLL block diagram. Okay.